Hey there everyone and welcome to a new video on the Future Programmer YouTube channel. The topic of today's video is the object-oriented interface of the matplotlib package. Now after watching this video, you will learn not only an alternative way of creating data visualizations using Python's matplotlib, you will also gain a deeper understanding of how these data visualizations are made in the first place. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So far, we have been using matplotlib's procedural or functional interface, which are the PLT function calls that we use to create data visualizations. Now, this style of matplotlib was made to imitate the inspiration of matplotlib, the programming language MATLAB. Now, matplotlib also has an object-oriented interface, which uses method calls on axes and figure objects to create data visualizations, and this can sometimes make our code more readable and intuitive. Before we go ahead and take a look at how matplotlib's object-oriented code looks like, let's first understand what the objects in a matplotlib plot actually are. So in this diagram titled Anatomy of a Figure, we can see, well, a figure. So what is a figure? On the top right-hand corner, you can see a label here, figure, plt.figure. So in all of these labels, the top thing is the name of the object. And the bottom line is going to be how we create that object. Now, in this case, we can use pyplot.figure to create a figure. And what is a figure? Well, a figure is just everything you see on here. Everything on this plot is part of the figure. The highest hierarchy in a figure is going to be an axis, which you can see right here, A-X-E-S. This is not an axis, like an x-axis or a y-axis. This is an axis, which is kind of like a subplot. And we can create an axis using big dot subplots. So this is an axis. And on the axis are the everything that we, are, we have been talking about. For example, you can see ax, that's the conventional name for an axis. ax dot set y label, that's a y label right here. We have x label, same deal. ax dot x axis. We have ax.setTitle, ax.plot to create a line, ax.marker or ax.scatter to create the markers. We have ax.grid, ax.legend. So everything on here is part of the subplot. And we can have many subplots in one figure. And the figure is the highest level object in a plot in matplotlib. So that's, that is pretty much uh, the anatomy of a figure in matplotlib. This is everything that I just talked about on text. If you would like to read that, go ahead. Now let's take a look at some code. So in this code cell, we can see we import numpy as mp and pyplot as plt. Let's create an array called x between negative 10 and 10 with an interval of 0 0.1. Now in these two code cells, we're creating the exact same data visualization. The first time using the functional interface, the second time using the object-oriented interface. So in the procedural style, the functional style of coding in matplotlib, we use plt.functioncalls for everything. So all of these are just plt.plot, title, x label, y label, legend, show, etc. So we have three plt.plot function calls, the title function call, x and y labels, plt.legend, and lastly plt.show to create this nice visualization with a title, X and Y axis labels, legend, and three curves on the graph. Now, in the object oriented style of coding in matplotlib, we first create a figure. That's the highest level thing you see on this picture right here, this diagram. So the figure can be created using plt.figure. So we create a variable called fig to store that figure. And then we use fig.subplots to create an axis. So if we don't specify anything in here, it's just going to create one axis. So this is one subplot. So this figure will have one subplot, which we name axis or AX. And then we can use AX to create the plots, the titles, the text, and the legend. So AX.plot. And you can see that the arguments that we pass in to AX.plot are the exact same as before. So X, Y, and we have keyword arguments such as label, 
which you can see is the exact same as before using the plt.plot function call. Now for title and x and y label, we're actually going to see that we're going to use the set title, set x label, set y label, instead of just uh, having title, x label, and y label. We have to have the set here. If we don't have it, we'll see that we get some error. This text object is not callable because now we're using the object-oriented interface. Title itself is going to be an object. And we're saying set title, so we're modifying the title itself. And ax.legend, it's not an object, so we're going to just be fine by calling ax.legend and plt.show to show everything. And we have the exact same data visualization as before. Now, while the functional PyPlot interface is sufficient for most scenarios, the object-oriented approach can offer some advantages in certain situations. Now, the functional interface, some people call it the implicit interface because we don't specify where we're plotting everything, where we're adding the plots, the scatter plots, the histograms, and the texts, and so on. So Matplotlib is going to keep track of the current figure and axes, and basically it will guess where we want to plot something. Now this works most of the time, but if you have a program with 20 figures and five axes, five subplots on each of them, then it can be very difficult for Matplotlib to guess where you want to add a title. So the object-oriented approach in this case, it's called the explicit interface for a reason because we specify exactly which axes, and which figure we're plotting on. And sometimes you'll see ax1, ax1, ax2, ax3. It's kind of a standard convention for naming multiple axes if you have one or if you have them. And if you want more information on the differences between the different uh, interfaces, you can take a look at this link, which will also be in the description below. So that's the object-oriented interface for you in Matplotlib. And that is it for this video on the object-oriented interface of the Matplotlib package. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will be happy to answer them. With that said, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in future programming tutorials.